Trust me. Don't worry. Don't panic. Trust me. It's going to be fun. Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanchman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is my quarantine here. And I would like to welcome you to GPU programming for video games. In this lecture, we're just going to download some of the shader code from Unity's website. Okay, this isn't going to be very exciting. Now, if by some twist of fate you wound up watching this video, even though you're not using Unity, if you're, say, using Unreal, or say if you're using the Godot engine, whatever engine you're using, I would still recommend downloading the Unity shader code and going through it because you can learn a lot from looking at that code. And as an aside, the Godot engine is really very interesting. It is totally free and open source and all that. It's probably the closest in general style to Unity out of all of the various engines that I've looked at. But really comparing it to Unity isn't really being fair to the Godot engine or Unity. Each is really trying to do its own thing. But if you're using Unity, you really need to spend some time looking through that shader code because the Unity documentation is usually either fairly sparse or fairly incorrect. A lot of the documentation that's up really applies to earlier versions of Unity. And especially if you're looking through web forms to try to find answers to questions, then whatever you're looking at will probably be extremely misleading. So if you're doing anything beyond just using the built-in standard shader, you have to spend some time in that shader code, particularly if you want the shaders that you write to play nice with the built-in Unity shaders. Head to your favorite online search engine and type something like Unity Archive. So Unity provides the source code to all of its various built-in shaders. Although the shader code is embedded inside the Unity executable, the actual source code needs to be downloaded separately. So let's download the source code to the latest version of 2019. This tends not to change a lot. If you had previously downloaded the source code to 2019.4.0, you would probably not bother downloading it for 2019.4.2. However, they do tend to change between dot releases. So if the last time you downloaded the shader code was 2019.3.15, and now you're using 2019.4, well, then you wanna go download it again. Now, of course, the various executables are different between the Windows and Mac versions here. The links to download the shader code, these are actually the same between the Mac and PC versions, which makes sense because they want to be able to deploy your game to a billion different platforms. So it doesn't really matter which link you click on here. Let's download the built-in shaders. Do, 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 do. I also want to pick up the shader code for the latest beta, but unfortunately that's not available here. So let's go back to our search engine. So I'm just going to go here and try to search on 2020.1. 20, let's see. Okay, this I'm sure will download the installer for it. What about archive? Ah. Okay, here we have additional downloads, additional resources. Ah, built-in shaders. Okay, they did not make that easy to find. Okay, so the 2019 shaders downloaded with this 2019 extension, the 2020 beta shaders downloaded with no extension at all. It looks like the 2020 shaders have about half a megabyte of extra source code beyond the 2019 shaders. Oh, this is interesting. There's this extra editor default resources folder in the 2020 version. Who knows what that is? Huh. Okay. Interesting. Unity has some odd folder naming conventions. There's two main places you need to look in order to figure out how Unity shaders are actually working. One is the CG includes, and the other is default resources extra. There's not a whole lot that's terribly interesting inside just the default resources folder. Now, figuring out how the standard shader works is not a particularly easy task because it's designed to be, I think Unity at one point called it the Uber shader. Basically, it is huge. 
it goes here and then it goes down here and then it keeps going and then it keeps going and then it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. And what makes it particularly tricky to figure out is there's not an actual lot of code code in here. It's mostly a bunch of include files. So here it includes some standard stuff and then it has a whole bunch of different variations. I guess here's something with shadow. Here's something with some standard core stuff, whatever standard core stuff is. Here's some meta stuff. The meta stuff usually has to do with support for pre-computed bounce lighting calculations. We'll talk about that later in the course. Unity standard core forward, whatever that is. So even though this is huge, it's really a ton of copy and paste style programming. And you can see that I'm using Visual Studio code here. I really like this kind of visualization they have over here on the right. You can very quickly see that there's definitely this repeated block structure with these little blocks of code being mostly identical, except for a few variations. So that Uber shader style of shader coding is very different than say the Unity 4 version where you had a whole bunch of individual shaders for individual lighting effects. Each individual shader was fairly small. This is what makes this course so challenging to do because things are changing all the time, both in terms of Unity changing things from one version to the next each year and just general industry trends changing. There are topics I'm going to be covering this semester that probably were more like research topics 10 years ago. So besides that default resource extras folder, the main place you want to look is in CG includes. So if you scroll down here, here you'll see all of that Unity blah, blah, blah stuff. So here's Unity Standard Core, Unity Standard Core Forward, Unity Standard Input, Unity Standard Meta. These are the main include files that that standard shader file would import. So if we take a look at Unity Standard Core Forward, now we're getting down to details. Well, actually, no, this is calling other stuff. So we're importing either Unity Standard Core Forward Simple or Unity Standard Core. Let's take a look at Unity Standard Core. I bet that has a lot of good juicy stuff in it. Ooh, look, it's 26 kilobytes of source code. Okay, now we're talking, now there's stuff. Ah, look at all this stuff. More stuff. Stuff about tangents. Everybody loves tangents. Metallic gloss, roughness setup. Doesn't this look fun? Ah, global illumination stuff. Anyway, you can go down quite a rabbit hole here, and guess what? In a good portion of the rest of the course, we're going to go down this rabbit hole. Trust me. Don't worry. Don't panic. Trust me. It's going to be fun.